an important message from Youth Fountain Laboratory, makers of Vasoflux and Vasoflux for Men. If you're over the age of 35 and over the years you've eaten pizza, dairy foods, deli meats, or meats with fat, you are likely to have some degree of plaque buildup in your veins and arteries. This increases your risk of suffering a stroke or heart attack exponentially, and no one wants such a catastrophic event to occur. Introducing Plaqueout. Plaqueout is made of all natural ingredients proven to help. Dissolve clots in the blood. Remove calcium deposits and plaque from the walls of veins and arteries. Improve viscosity of the blood. Improve elasticity of the veins and arteries. Treat varicose veins. And prevent the reoccurrence of plaque buildup. For more information, visit Youth Fountain Laboratory at youthfountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856. And remember, to help unclog veins and arteries, get the plaque out. Keith Adam Van Horn, born October 23rd, 1975. Today's stunted growth feature is a little different than normal in that this basketball player's journey had the right mix of controllable and uncontrollable growth stunts. To me, he's the epitome of what it means to use basketball and not let it use you. In fans' eyes, many of them wanted the former number two overall pick, who was a three-time conference player of the year, first-team All-American, and All-NBA first-teamer to do a little more than he eventually did. But at just 30 years old and a handful of NBA teams played for under his belt, he decided to call it quits. So JC, why even feature this guy? Well, one, because growing up, I was a huge fan of his game, think his story and footage of said game needs to be showcased to the younger generation, and his story can give a different perspective for viewers that need to see that having growth stunts aren't always negatively long-lasting, and you can still have control of your destiny at the end of the day. Although his career was short-lived, I have the ultimate respect for what he's done in the game and admire his decision-making as a man during and after he left. So let's look at three reasons I think Keith Van Horn's growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get him. Keith Van Horn is from Fullerton, California and played for Diamond Bar High School. In his prime, he was a 6'10", 240 pound power forward, small forward that wasn't highly recruited but proved that wasn't necessary. He signed a letter of intent to play for Rick Majerus and the Utah Utes and began his freshman season in 93-94. He was an instant star for the team, setting a freshman record for scoring at 18 a game, shooting 51% from the field, adding 8 rebounds. He was first team all-conference, a spot he would claim all four years. By his sophomore season, he led his team in scoring and rebounding, taking them to the NCAA tournament, losing in the second round. By this time, it was clear that Keith Van Horn was one of the best players in college basketball and best in his conference, winning his first of three conference player of the years, averaging 21 points a game and eight rebounds. Stunt number one, traded to Philly. By Van Horn's senior season in college, he was an obvious top five amateur in the country, and depending on how his season went, a possible number one overall pick in a class that included Hall of Famer Tim Duncan, Chauncey Billups, and Tracy McGrady. He shot 90% from the foul line that season and averaged 22 points a game and nine and a half rebounds, becoming the school's all-time leading scorer, first team All-American, conference player of the year, and number two ranking for the school, which was the highest in history. The team made it to the Elite Eight behind Van Horn's heroics in the conference tournament and national championship. By the end of his season, he was named a College Player of the Year by ESPN and considered easily a top two pick. Tim Duncan, who was the consensus National Player of the Year and had an outstanding college career, was pretty much locked into the first overall pick, especially when San Antonio ended with the selection following the lottery. Philadelphia landed the number two pick and were dead set on taking the best available next option, which was Van Horn. He, along with agent David Falk, had other plans though. 
The hand horn had a few issues with the Sixers construction and stories began to come out that he didn't want to quote, play with the brothers, whatever that means. His official statement to coach Larry Brown was that the attitude of some of the players, the way the team played and their losing record was something he felt wasn't a good situation for him, so they shouldn't look to draft him. He refused to work out or interview with them further, but the team decided to select him at number two after Duncan anyway. His agent was able to strike a deal that sent Van Horn to New Jersey for the number seven pick Tim Thomas and more. For the Nets, it was well worth it because Van Horn came in and had an amazing first year where he was first team all rookie and averaged 19.7 points a game, 6.6 rebounds, and led the team in scoring. If not for Tim Duncan once again, he'd have been the clear-cut rookie of the year. In 1999, he averaged 21 points a game and 8 rebounds, but from that season on, his production began to dwindle due to roster additions and improvements, most notably Stefan Marbury, who instantly became the face of the franchise and number one on the chart as far as opportunity. Although Steph had his best seasons as an NBA player next to Keith, his style of play was still similar to the one he wanted to avoid in Philly, which may have led to him not being as comfortable and stats declining every year since 99 with the Nets. Whatever it was, the team decided to trade him after the season to his original draft team Philadelphia, which had to be a bit uncomfortable for he and possibly the fans. Lucky for everyone involved, it was short-lived. He had a solid year with the Sixers, averaging 16 points and 7 rebounds for a team and coach he never wanted to play for and was traded in the offseason to the Knicks. This began his journey across the league that for his lifestyle and need to be comfortable on the floor wasn't conducive to one another. Had he been traded somewhere he was comfortable and could see himself signing long term, maybe his production and length of career both may have increased. Stunt number two, taking its toll. Like anything you do in life for a long time, it takes its toll on you in different ways. It can be positive or negative and ultimately decide your future. In Van Horn's case, being traded so many times from team to team, city to city, sometimes mid-season, were the hurdles he had to jump along with his new family of wife and four children. He said that he was tired and felt uncomfortable taking his kids out of school so often to appease his own dreams, and we've seen how much Keith Van Horn prefers to be comfortable. It's something he took seriously as he valued giving his kids a stable upbringing and being a father and husband more consistently. His last outstanding season came in 0304, splitting time with the Knicks and Bucks where he averaged 16 points and 7 rebounds. He was traded to the Dallas Mavericks on February 24, 2005 where he spent his last two seasons and played the last 29 games of that season and 53 the following. By 0506, after just nine seasons and at 30 years old, he retired from the game because of the effects and toll it took on him mentally, but most importantly, his family. He would return to the league after a year off to sign a four-year deal with the Mavericks with the first year being guaranteed. Shortly after, and not having played a game for Dallas, they traded his rights back to New Jersey, who waived him and paid him over four million for sitting at home. A more comfortable Keith Van Horn who could have stayed one place, servicing his family and self needs could have resulted in a Hall of Fame career, kind of like what his counterpart Tim Duncan was by then building. Stunt number three, early retirement. The final stunt in the growth of Keith Van Horn is one that admirably came by his own choice. After getting paid millions to be a father and husband for a year, he could have easily gotten another deal and played a good five more years in the league, but decided that the best thing for his life was to put basketball behind him and step away early. Had he stayed longer though, I'm not sure if he could have made a positive difference in the way his career played out, seeing as he wasn't coming back to be anyone's first, second, or third option anymore, which could only hurt his legacy even more. 
His choice to leave and stay retired is one I highly admire because he had proved himself, made almost a hundred million dollars by then, and got to live his early 30s as a rich family man, investor, entrepreneur, community leader, and more. He left without any major injuries and did it on his own free will. What's even more special is that now he gets to be that husband and father he wanted to be and help in his community in numerous ways, including a nonprofit basketball program that helps build kids from 3 to 19. All in all, salute to Keith Van Horn. I must admit, I didn't know what to expect diving into his story, except being disappointed with some of the things said about him. But after, I feel a great deal of respect for how he took his career into his own control from the beginning, and even though he lost control in between, he managed to gain a grip once again in the end, and made a beautiful life for himself and family where he was able to accomplish so much more goals than even he may have expected. All because his growth was quote, stunted, and some fans think he should have been more. Who wins that debate? Well, Keith Van Horn, easily. I mean, would you take $4 million to cut your own grass, clean your pool, eat cheese crackers, and watch old VHS dramas on the couch at 30? Shit. It's your boy JC, Standard Growth, and I'm out. Also, if you have some time, I'm inviting you to check out the new website. Many have been asking for a cash app or how they can support the channel. Honestly, you watching the video and getting to this point of it is more than enough. But if you want to go the extra mile and get some pretty cool gear at the same time, new winter hoodies have just been released. It's a part of a project I'm working on, all original designs. For now, there's the gold tips along with the red and black, a play on words that exalt the game we all know and love. Stunnergrowth3.com if you want to get some gear and show some support. It's your boy JC Stunnergrowth. I'm really out this time. Chill.